When it comes to solar panels, you can pretty much spend as much as you want to, but it's really difficult to know how much is enough. In this video, we're going to test a simple and reasonably cheap at just over £100, 100 watt solar panel and controller. We'll put it through its paces and see how it gets on. We'll be giving away this panel and controller, along with the other products we've been testing recently, in an upcoming video. So stick with us to find out how you could win. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything campervan and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up, it really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. You may have seen our previous video on Solar Basics. If not, you can check it out by clicking the link here and in the video notes. But in reality, it's really difficult to put into context how much solar is actually enough for you. We have a 280 watt panel and 30 amp MPPT solar controller and 200 ampere hours of AGM batteries, which for our power usage means that we can be self-sufficient pretty much indefinitely all year round, but it's not cheap and it's also quite heavy. For some it will be overkill and for others it may not be enough. In this video we're going to look at what I would say is the most budget solar solution worth considering, but it could be enough for those with a modest power requirement. We'll take this relatively cheap, flexible 100 watt solar panel that is light and easy to fit with a cheap PWM solar controller, which for the pair you can get for around £130. For the tests, we're going to link this to a pretty standard 100 ampere hour AGM leisure battery and using the battery monitor we reviewed previously, see the link here or in the video notes if you want to check that out and then we'll see how effective the panel and controller are and in what scenarios this could be all you need to spend. A quick word of warning when buying a panel online is to check the physical size of the panel against the published power output. There are quite a few adverts out there that claim to be a certain wattage, but when you look at the size of the panel there is no way it could be that power. For example, this one that claims to be 100 watts but is only 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. As a comparison, the 100 watt panel we are testing is just over 1 meter by 60 centimeters. Let's take a quick look at the test setup. Here we have the controller which is connected to the battery via a DC circuit breaker. The battery monitor with a Hall effect sensor to be able to see what power is being taken, what is being put in and the capacity left in the battery. And the solar panels are ready to be connected to the controller. It's important to do this in the right order. First we connect the battery to the controller which allows the controller to initiate. Then with the panels in the shade or covered up, connect to the solar panels. Once they're in the sun, you can see the arrow indicating that charge is being received. As the direct morning sun hits the panel, our light meter shows we're getting over 100,000 lux of light from the sun and this is translating to around 2.8 amps going into the battery. As a pretty dense patch of cloud passes, the light level drops to around 20,000 lux and we're seeing roughly half an amp of charge. Now for the test, what I'm going to try to simulate is a long weekend off-grid for a moderate user of 12 volt power. I carried out the tests before our recent heat wave in the UK and the weather was more of what I would say is typical of June or July. For our moderate user, I'm not going to be talking about inverters, microwaves or electric cool boxes, all of which I already know this setup will be nowhere near big enough for. Using the calculation you can find in our video on 12 volt systems, let's put together a rough estimate of the total usage for this relatively moderate user of 12 volt power. Let's assume we're going to have some LED lights on in the evening and charge two phones from empty each day. The water pump is going to take some power and let's imagine we're going to use a 12 volt TV for a few hours a night. That means we would consume roughly 
25 to 30 ampere hours from our 100 ampere hour battery in each 24 hour period. Most of that usage is probably going to be in the evening, so if we arrive at our hypothetical little off-grid site Friday afternoon or evening when we're not going to get much solar for the rest of that day, we're going to start Saturday morning having used a chunk of our battery's capacity. To simulate this, I've run down the leisure battery to approximately 72% capacity, what it's likely to be on Saturday morning. Having let the battery rest, this is also backed up by the resting voltage that we see. Luckily it's a reasonably sunny day so we should get some solar power going in. I've kept the panel horizontal as if it were mounted to a van roof and to add a bit of realism despite the sun being up for around 15 hours we've got the panel where it's shaded until approximately 10am and then again after 6pm as we all know you often can't park your van where it's in the sun all the time. The cloud cover is pretty variable so throughout the day we see varying levels of charge but the capacity of the battery comes up nicely. Here you can see the blue line for charge rate fluctuates but we see a steady increase in the battery capacity throughout the day. By the end of the day we're up to 88.2% capacity but now we've got that evening of lights, TV and phone charging so by Sunday morning we wake up to a battery capacity of 65%. The weather in the morning is a bit more cloudy than the day before, but in the afternoon it clears up. So again we see a varying charge level throughout the day, but by the end of the day we have a battery capacity back up to 84%. So in real life, how much difference is the panel actually making? In this visual you can see in orange the discharge rate we would see on the leisure battery without the solar panel and in blue the discharge rate with the solar panel. Bearing in mind the generally accepted safe discharge level of an AGM battery to prevent long term damage is 50% we can see that the battery without a solar panel hits that level before the end of Saturday. Whereas the battery with the solar panel wouldn't hit it until day 5 or the Tuesday of our hypothetical long weekend away. Now do bear in mind that although the days weren't constant sun, the amount of solar energy you would get in other seasons could be significantly different and this setup is only going to be operating at this sort of level from late spring to early autumn at best and days of poor weather would take their toll. But in conclusion, if you are just looking at extending your off-grid capacity by potentially a few days in the sunnier months of the year, rather than being able to be totally self-sufficient, this kind of setup can make quite a difference for not too much money. Something I couldn't test is the longevity of the panel. Being out in the sun and exposed to moisture can lead to delamination or discoloration of a flexible panel. And in general, their lifetime is less than a solid panel. But what you do gain is reduced weight, making them easier to install and obviously they are flexible to fit with the contours of your roof. You can find links to the panel and controller we used in the test in the video notes. These were sent to us by Banggood to try. As I mentioned earlier we'll be giving away this panel and controller in an upcoming video along with the other products that we've been trying out so hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be sure you don't miss the giveaway. You can also check out the reviews of the other Banggood products we've tried in the playlist on screen and linked in the video notes. Thanks for watching our video and as always if you have any questions or feedback please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful please like, share and consider subscribing.